Hey guys, SimColor here, and today we are going to move on. As we have the posts system working, we are able to make posts and save them to the database and to the storage. We are now going to move on to the profile of the user. We are not going to move into the feed yet because we don't have a follow system implemented yet. So we need to have a profile system in order to have a follow system in order to have a feed. So we are going to handle the profile page right now and uh, we'll make ch some changes to how we make posts because we have to have one other field with each post that saves, which is a thumbnail for the video in order to be displayed in the profile of the users. So we'll learn how to do all of that today. Uh, it will be a simplified version of the profile that TikTok has, but it will closely match the UI elements that TikTok implements. So if you are enjoying this series thus far, then please do leave it a like, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Let's do it. Okay, so let's do it. And the first thing that we'll do, even though we are not going to use this package right now, is to install a package which is called Expo Video Thumbnails. And let's enlarge this. Uh, this package simply allows you to create thumbnails out of videos. So this is really useful when you don't want the user to give you a thumbnail directly and you want to generally generate it better yet automatically. So we are going to grab this Expo Install Expo Video Thumbnails and go into the project. So in here, we are going to open up a new terminal. And because we are in the TikTok uh, root folder, we have to change directory into front end. Then we are going to run expo install and give it some time. Okay, so it installed successfully and now we are going to deploy the server. And after it has finished deploying, we can uh, simply type in A uh, in order to actually uh, run it on Android without having to use the web page that uh, Expo generates for you. Okay, so after it has done installing the app and actually deploying it, we are going to go into source, screens, and actually start writing in our profile screen. So in this case, it will be called profile. And as always, we are going to come in here and do index, .js and uh, styles.js. So styles.js, like so. Then we are going to go into index.js and initialize everything. So RNF to create a functional component. And in here, we are simply going to call it profile screen. Okay, nothing new here. We are going to go into navigation home, which is our home navigation, which displays this bottom bar navigation. Uh, and we are going to replace the empty screen that is inside the me screen, which is this last one, and replace the empty screen for the profile screen. Okay, save that and it will load obviously an empty screen as we don't have anything within our profile screen. And in the meantime, we are able to close down home as we won't be needing it any longer. And now in here, let's start up actually writing in some code. Well, the first thing that we want to do is to get the currently logged in user's details. So we are going to use selector, which is a, a hook for Redux, which allows you to fetch the data from um, the global state. Uh, and in this case, the auth reducer. And we want to get more specifically the current user variable. And you are able to see it by going into reducers auth, and we want to get this current user var. So this is what we are going to do. And by doing this, we are able to get the data from this user really easily. And if I come in here and do console log current user, and it is given an error because your selector isn't important. So let's import it right now. Use selector. Let's see where it is. There it is. Now, if we save it and then come in here, we are able to get the data from the currently logged in user as this has been handled before uh, in the previous lesson. So if you have any questions about this, then please go and watch the previous lessons where we actually implemented the off system and Redux as a whole so that you understand why this works. So, okay, so now let's handle the main container and we are going to do this by coming in here and do style styles dot container. Save that, and this isn't the, the styles file that we want, so styles, like so. 
Now we have to uh, start up the styles file. So I'm going to go into another styles and grab the boilerplate code from it. I'm going to delete most of it as uh, most of it isn't useful, uh, but I'm going to leave the container as this is a style that will exist in here. Okay, so what do we want in here? Well, we want the background to be white. We want the flex to be one. However, the padding top will be a bit shorter than that. Uh, let's set it to 24 because we'll have a nav bar at the top and the status bar, which is this little tab right here, occupies uh, around 24, but this can change and vary from phone to, to phone. So uh, be careful about this. I'm going to uh, do what works best for this particular emulator. You might have to change this a bit. But for now, as this is just a proof of concept, I just want to show you how it works and give you the basis for how to style out the components. So let's remove this console log as it isn't needed anymore. We have the container. Now what we want to do is to create a profile nav bar. So for this, we are going to go up top and we are able to collapse this as it, it isn't needed at the moment. And we are going to in, go into profiles as this will be um, a component that will be reused a lot. And we are going to type in profile. Now we'll have yet another folder, which in this case will be nav bar. And the nav bar will have an index.js and a styles.js. Now in the index.js, we are going to do RNF as always, and we are going to say profile nav bar. This will be the name of this uh, component. So let's go back into the profile screen and add it in here. Profile screen, no, better yet, profile nav bar. Close that up and it didn't import it, so I'm going to import profile nav bar and it will import it like so. One thing that we want to do is pass along the user. So we are going to come in here and do current user and pass it along in here. Obviously, when we generalize this component in the future, we'll, instead of passing along the current user, we'll pass along the user that we actually want to see. Uh, but in this case, I want to keep this as the, the main focus uh, to use the, only the currently logged in user. So after uh, this is done and this is all working, we'll move on to the general case in the next lessons. Okay, so in here, if we uh, go into navbar, we'll be able to access the user in here, like so. So uh, this is good because we now abstracted the profile navbar from the user that it receives. It doesn't care if it is uh, the currently logged in user or another user, it just receives a user object. And by doing this, we are able to not have to specifically change anything within the profile bar, uh, nav bar, uh, we can simply pass along a new user and it will uh, just uh, crunch the numbers and actually render things as it should. Okay, but now how do we style out this profile nav bar? I'm going to close out the styles and the profile at the moment as it won't be needed. Uh, and I'm going to come in here and do style, styles dot container. As always, we are going to have a container for this and uh, this imported the wrong style, so let's do it like so. And we are going to grab the styles from another uh, styles uh, component and simply drop it in here again because it is just easier. Okay, now that we have this and let's fix up these imports like so, uh, we are able to actually start uh, writing in some uh, styles and adding all of the parameters that are needed. So before writing in the style, because it will overcomplicate things a bit, it is easier to just dump all of the components that will live inside of this view and then style it out as that makes it easier to understand what's happening. Okay, so the first thing that we'll need is the feather and it isn't auto importing. So let's come in here and do feather from Expo Vector Icons, which is an awesome package which you should use. It contains a bunch, a bunch of icons that you can use at will. So yeah, that's awesome. We'll have a search. And if you go into your profile from uh, TikTok, you'll see that this search appears so that you can search for users and it appears on the left side of the navbar. Then we'll have the size, which in this case, let's say 20, something like that. Save that and it appears, so it is already rendering, which is awesome. Then on the other side, 
of the navbar, we'll have another icon, which in this case will simply display a menu. Let's add it in here. But as this icon is a tiny bit smaller, I'm going to set it to 24. Okay, and uh, we are going to have the text with the user's name that's being displayed, whose profile is being displayed there yet. So in this case, it will be user dot, and this has to be in between curly brackets so that we can actually use the variables and not just display the text, user dot something. And now we'll do dot display name. Okay, and if we come into our Firestore, and you come in here, we'll see that we have a display that name that will be null. This will be populated if you use, for example, Google, Google sign-in or Apple sign-in, something like that. It would populate with the name of the user in those um, platforms. But because we don't have anything, it will simply be null, which will render out an empty string. So it won't have anything inside here at the moment, um, but in the future, we'll actually implement something. So the styles for the text, so let's say styles.text, and let's go into styles, render that out, okay? And this will be uh, really simple. What we have to do is font size 16 to make it a bit bigger. And when we save this, uh, the name won't appear. And this is again, because this user display name is empty. But if we remove it and we come in here and add the color of black, then it will render out user display name. Okay, so that's what we are going to do at the moment. And this is because, and because we can see in here that we are logged in with the test free at gmail.com, let's come in here and actually try and find it and uh, replace this um, display name. So test name. Okay, save that. Come in here and let's try and add the, the curly brackets and see what appears. Test name appears. So uh, this is working. We need to have an edit page in order for the user to be able to change this. Okay, so right now we want to display it in a row fashion so that everything appears in an horizontal line. Then we want to add some padding to it and I forgot the comma up top, so padding, horizontal, first of all, will be 20. Then we want a padding vertical, just make sure nothing touches the, the top as much at least, and uh, we'll set it to 15. Then we want a border bottom, uh, which will display a line below the nav bar so that we can see a clear distinction between the nav bar and the rest of the components and we'll set the border width to one and the border color to light gray. Save that. And because we are using flex one, uh, it is expanding everything to the bottom. So we don't want that. And I'm going to remove the flex one. Okay, and uh, there we go. Now what we are going to do is to come into the text and say flex one. This will extend these components as much as possible without removing any other items from the screen. So. Uh, this is exactly what we need, as text name should be in the middle of the screen, of the navbar in this case, which is the screen. Then we want to do text align center, and this will center out the name. Uh, one other thing that we can do is actually to uh, come in here and do font weight, just because uh, the, the weight of the font within TikTok is a bit bolder. Uh, it isn't quite as bold as this, but well, we don't have any other option. So I'm going to go with bold. Okay, so now that we have this, we are able to come in here and do touchable opacity and make this the parent of both icons. Uh, even though we are not going to use it at the moment, this will simply make it them clickable. Okay, and let's do the same thing for the menu. This will be used uh, later on when we actually have to use these two buttons. Okay, so now that we have a profile bar ready and done, we are able to move on to the next part, which is the profile header, which shows up uh, an avatar with the, the user, the username, which we won't have uh, in this series, but we'll replace it with the user uh, email. Uh, it is basically the same thing. Both of them are unique identifiers. Uh, it is just easier to implement the email because it comes with uh, a Firebase auth, so it makes it really that much easier. Then we'll have 
the follower count, the following count, and the likes count. And finally, we'll have an edit button. And then we'll move on to showing the user's posts. Okay, so let's get out of the profile navbar and let's add yet another folder called header. So this header will be contain an index.js as always and a styles.js. So let's come into the index.js, do rnf and do profile header. Okay, now that we have our profile header, let's go into the profile and add it in here. So profile header. And again, it isn't auto importing, so let's uh, do it manually. Save that, come in here, do profile header, import it, and there we go. Let's go into the profile, nothing shows up as we don't have anything yet within profile header, but let's get out of profile and let's just focus on the header of uh, this profile. Okay, so the first thing that we have to do is obviously to pass along the styles to the, the, the boilerplate for the styles to these uh, components. So let's delete text and let's simply leave the container as uh, it will be useful. And now we'll have to come in here and actually import the styles. So import styles from dot styles like so, and I uh, made an error in here because it has two dots. So let's save that like so, and let's add the styling to the container, the main container of these components. So styles.container. And before actually styling out the container, again, it is easier to have some elements inside of this container before actually trying to align items and doing all of that. So let's, first of all, add an avatar. An avatar, which is a module from React Native Paper, and it allows you to display round images, which are uh, commonly called avatars, uh, with the user's profile images and uh, any other image. So in this case, because we don't have an image, I'm going to display an icon. And in here, I'm going to say that the size will be 80. Let's make it really large as TikTok does that as well. And this will generate a bubble like so. And we'll have an icon, which in this case will be, uh, let's say, account. This icon is comes from material community icons, which is uh, which Expo vector icons contains. So uh, we have to use icons from that specific repository of icons. So now that we have an account in here, we are able to view uh, the, the icon and the avatar, and we are now able to style out the main container as we know where the objects will live inside it. So in this case, we'll simply add, first of all, a padding vertical of 20. Just make sure it doesn't touch the edge. Then we'll align items to the center. These will center out these, uh, all of the items that live inside uh, of this container. And there we go. This is what we need. We don't need to do anything else. So let's move on to the next part, which is to display the text with the user name, or in this case, the uh, email of the user. Okay, so let's come in here and do dot email. And we have to add the user to the, the props of these components. So let's add it like so. And the email appears right away. Awesome. Then let's add the styling to it. So style, styles dot email text. Let's save that. Go into our go into our styles.js, and uh, we are going to change the styling of it a bit. So first of all, we are going to add some padding to it to not touch the avatar, and this is the only thing that we need. Uh, because, uh, well, the text in this field is really small when, when it comes to TikTok, so I'm going to leave it like so, in the default size uh, that comes with React Native. So, uh, next up, we have the follower following and likes counter, uh, so let's do it uh, in here, as this is the most complicated part of this header component. Let's create a view which will uh, contain every single uh, set of counters, then we'll have another view for each counter, 
and I typed in a Z there where it shouldn't be. So in here we'll have two texts, one for the counter and one for the label of the counter. So the first one, I believe it is following, so let's do it like so. And it appears awesome, but let's add another set of this to see what happens. And in this case, it will be following, or better yet, followers, like so. They appear in a, a column fashion, and we want to change this. So let's come in here and do styles.counter container. Save that, go into styles, and in here we are going to simply do flex direction row. And by doing this, uh, the items will appear again in an horizontal fashion, and there we go. Now we want to go into our uh, main view for each counter and add yet another container, which in this case will be really simple. We'll do styles dot counter item container. Let's grab it, save that, and in here we are simply going to do flex of one, which will uh, make sure every item gets separated and they are not touching each other, and we are going to simply do align item center. This will center out each and every single item that comes within it. So we are, as you can see, the zero is Vertic uh, horizontally aligned with the following text. Okay, and we are going to grab this and move it over to this one again. And uh, I'm going to not create another one because we still have to style out the text. So let's do style, styles.counter number text. Let's call it like so. And in here it is styles. So let's correct that come back into the styles.js, open up a new style, which is counter number text, and let's style this out. So what we are going to do is to set the font weight as TikTok does to bold, and we are going to enlarge the font size a bit. So in this case, I'll set it to 16. That seems about right. And we are able to create yet another counter number uh, text, but replace counter, uh, replace number by label. This will be the following and followers and likes text. So in here, the font weight won't be bold, uh, quite on the contrary, and uh, we'll change the font size to, let's say, 11 and the color to gray. As TikTok really doesn't give uh, that much standout to this text. So let's go back and let's add that counter label text to the labels of uh, the counters. So let's do it like so and following gets trimmed down a bit and uh, it looks really similar to what TikTok has. So we are going to quickly triple down on these containers, grab the followers, change the name, to all of that, and the last one will be likes. So let's save this, and there we go. We now have our counters. However, there's an issue. They are uh, really to the left and to the right. So we want to make sure they are uh, they stick a bit closer together. And to do this, we are going to go into the container and add a padding horizontal of 60, something like that. So they stick together a bit more and they aren't as separated as that tends to look a bit off. Let's even make it 65 or something like that. Okay, there we go. Now all that's left to do is to create the button that appears at the bottom to edit the profile. Now let's make this as small as possible. And for this, we are going to have a touchable opacity. Let's save that and let's add the styles. However, in here, I'm going to make a new folder within our source folder, which will be called styles. And I'm doing this in order to reuse styles in between components so that we are not always copy and pasting styles or writing new styles when we have written them before. So for this, I'm going to create an index.js and a button styles.js. These button styles, again, we'll need to use the style sheet um, 
object. So let's go into button styles and let's clear this up. And the first thing that we want to do in this case is to uh, go into index.js and do import button styles. And it isn't auto importing because we forgot to change the name in here. So button styles, button styles. Import button styles from button styles, and we are going to export this. So this index.js simply serves as a one bus stop for all of the global styles that we have. And we are going to export it like so, button styles. OK, so now that we have our button styles, we are able to come in here and do button styles dot. And now let's, uh, first of all, create, uh, come up with a name for this. And uh, it is a button that's outlined, this edit profile button. So let's say gray outlined button. Save that. And this style doesn't exist yet. So let's come in here and create it. So what we have to do is to simply, uh, first of all, create a border color, which will be gray, or better yet, light gray. I believe that will look a bit better. Then the border width will be one. The border radius, let's give a slight radius to this, not that much, but let's say like four should be enough. Uh, but we are not able to see it, so let's add the text inside it so that we are able to see what we are doing. So text, edit, profile. And it appears, awesome. Then we are going to add some padding to it so that the text has some space around it. So in this case, it will be padding vertical of 10 and padding horizontal of 30. Let's save that. OK, it looks awesome. It is clickable, so great. OK, so uh, now if the button is ready. What we have to do is to come in here and simply add some spacing between the button and this counter container. So let's come in, in here and do padding bottom 20. And there we go. Uh, it is as it should. We have our header profile done. But we are going to add one other thing just before we go into the displaying the, 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 profile, the posts of the user, which is to add the border in here. So border bottom width will be one, and border color will be light gray. Save that, and there we go. So it doesn't look perfect. However, it is close enough uh, where you could identify this as being a, a profile screen from TikTok. So that's awesome, that's what I wanted. If you want to go a bit deeper, now we have the resources to do it on your own. However, uh, now we are going to move on to the final and arguably the most interesting part of the lesson. We are going to display the posts of the user. Okay, so uh, the first thing that we have to do is to actually generate a thumbnail for each and every single post. So now that we have this package right here, and let's come in here, these video thumbnails package, we are now able to do it. It is really simple and you have all of the source code and documentation within the Expo documentation, which I strongly advise you looking over. So what we need is to first of all grab these uh, imports and let's go into screens, camera, index. So let's go up top and add the import that's needed, video thumbnails. Now let's go into uh, the documentation and grab this generate thumbnail function. So we are going to go down below, below pick from gallery, as it will be called up by uh, all of the functions above, or better yet, the record video and the pick from gallery um, function. So what we all do in here is to first of all get the source. So the source will be the URI of the video that we want to upload. Then we are going to come in here and replace this uh, boilerplate example video from here with source. And we are going to define at which time do we want to take the thumbnail from the video. And I'm going to set it to five seconds. This is in milliseconds, so yeah. And this time will be the time at which the uh, thumbnail will be 
fetched from, and I'm going to set it to 1000. This 1000 isn't 1000 seconds or 1000 minutes, obviously, it is 1000 milliseconds, which, which equates to one second. So at one second of the video, it will grab a snapshot from it. Then we are going to, instead of setting um, a state variable, we are going to return the URI. This URI will be the URI of the thumbnail, so we are able to get it from there. It will generate a file within your device, uh, which isn't accessible, so it won't be appear in the gallery of the user, but, but it will be uh, usable by the app that we have. Okay, so now that we have the URI in here, what we are going to do is to simply grab the generate thumbnail and uh, start populating it where it is necessary. So the first thing that we have to do is to come into Peak From Gallery, and then I can remove this console log as it isn't needed anymore. And let's say let's source thumb equals to await generate thumbnail and simply pass along the URI of the video, which in this case will be result URI. And this is await, like so. Okay, now let's grab it and go into a record video uh, and we'll pass it along in here. But instead of a res a result URI, it will be simply source. Now, in order to pass it along to the save post screen, what we have to do is to simply drop it in there. So source thumb. Now let's go into the save post screen and actually re receive this data as uh, it is needed. So what we have to do is to double up on the source and do source thumb. This is the create post action, so uh, we have to go in there and uh, save some things. So in this case, it will be thumbnail. And uh, right now we have a problem because we are just ready to save one item to the uh, Firebase storage and then right away save an, an entry in Firestore. So we have to change the logic of this somehow. And it is really simple if you understand how promises work. So we'll use a promise all function in order to create a bunch of promises, in this case two, and only return a result whenever all of the promises end, either with a rejection or with a resolve. So let's first of all move this UUID out of here. So let's create a new UUID, which is the same for both the video and the image. So storage post ID equals to UUID. Then we are going to create a promise all, which in this case will first of all have a let all save promises. And in here, I'm going to call it all save promises instead. And we are going to do promise dot all and in here we'll have an array of promises that uh, we have to wait before actually returning anything. So what we have in here is the saved media to storage, but instead of UUID, it will be storage post ID, and then we'll pass along the name of the uh, media type. So in this case, video. Now we'll have yet another one, which will be for the thumbnail. So let's first of all add a comment here, and this one will be thumbnail. Okay, so now that we have this, uh, and uh, we have the array of promises that we'll have to wait to make sure they resolve, we can simply go into this then and do, instead of the save media to storage, simply all save promises. So now you might ask, what will this return? Well, because the saved media to storage was returning a download URL, it will still return a download URL. However, it will return it in a, an array corresponding to the amounts with a length corresponding to the amounts of promises that we have in here. So it will return the download URL for in the first position for the video, and it will down, uh, return the download URL in the second position for the thumbnail. So what I'm going to do in here is to call it media instead of download URL and paste it in here. So what will happen is in the Firestore, it will appear an array in here containing, first of all, a download URL 
video for the video yet. And in the second position, the same, but for the thumbnail. Okay, this is what will happen. I'm going to remove this as obviously I want to start the media and not those, tech, the, those strings. But yeah, this is just so that you have an idea of what will happen and why I, we are going to use this promise all. Uh, the other option would be to chain these promises, which is to do, uh, for example, this save media to storage. Then whatever, uh, we save the results or something like that. And then we uh, do this save media to storage again, and then we uh, save to Firestore, uh, Firestore in here. But I don't uh, like that. It looks a bit messy and it is hard to see. So I prefer to use this promise all. So let's test this by going into uh, here. Let's pick out a video and let's uh, do another post. So subscribe to Simcoder in caps lock. So you know that you should do it. Okay, let's go into our Firestore. Let's do it like so. And let's uh, move the emulator to the top. In here, we are going to go into post so that we can see what appears. Let's save it. And this is what's showing, what was showing up before. So let's give it some time. Okay, and it's saved. So let's see. And uh, we have in here the media two uh, media, the first one will be a video, so let's test it out, or it is supposed to be, and I have <laughs> uh, quotes in there, so let's do it like so. There we go, we have the video that I uploaded, and uh, in the second part, we have the thumbnail. Let's see what it is. So let's come in here, paste it, and it is a black screen. So if we, for example, just prove that it works, uh, went to save post, and instead of uh, having the time be uh, 1000, let's set it to three. And if we do it like so, and we upload the exact same video, and uh, in here, and like the video will be the description, we post it, give it some time to upload, and I actually set it to uh, 5,000, I changed it. And if we come in here and open up the uh, image uh, download URL, let's come in here and this thumbnail appears. So the image was generated successfully. Awesome. Now we are able to actually display a list of uh, the, the current user, currently logged in users posts. But before that, we have to fetch them. So in order to do this, let's learn how to make that query. So let's go into Redux and in Actions, we already have a post actions uh, file. So this is where uh, we'll make the query. So in here we'll do, and I'm going to grab these actions because the boilerplate is really similar. And instead of description video and thumbnail, we'll have a new ID of the user that we want to fetch the videos off. So by default, it will be Firebase auth dot current user dot uid then instead of create posts it will be get posts by user and we'll remove all of this so let's do it like so and now we are able to actually uh, call up this action in uh, the of js because in here we are dispatching to get the current user data However, we also want to get posts by user. And we are going to do user UID, even though it is default, just to make it uh, a bit clearer. And we are going to go into get posts by user and actually start writing in the query. So in this case, it will be firebase.firestore.collection post dot where and this post should be have an s at the end however i removed it uh, purposefully so that people don't get confused and uh, if you miss an s then it won't work so i prefer to leave it in the singular fashion even though the best code practices for firebase is to have them uh, be um, plural in the plural form of the word 
In this where we'll have the creator, because we want to search by user, uh, the only way of doing this is by going in uh, each collection and seeing if the creator uh, matches the currently logged in user in this case. So where creator equals equals to UID, and we are going to order, and this is an error, let's go below, and we are going to order by creation, and this will be descending, so that we get the most recent video which has the, the biggest timestamp first. Okay, so now we are going to do on snapshot, and this will receive a snapshot, and let's make this a tin, tiny bit smaller. Well, it disappeared, that's fine. Then we are going to have an arrow function in here. And we are going to start getting in some posts because this will return a snapshot which contains a lot of documents and we have to parse them into a usable object and then uh, moving them into an array. So the best way of doing this is by doing snapshot.docs.map doc arrow function and in here get the data ready for each and every single document that we have. So the first thing that we want to get is the data, which in this case it will be doc.data. This will contain everything uh, that is inside of this uh, document. However, it won't get the ID, so we have to get it separately. And in order to get it, we'll do const ID equals to doc.id and in here it is const and in here uh, it doesn't need any uh, commas so let's remove them then uh, whenever uh, it is done we are able to come in here and simply return the new object for each and every single post which in this case will be id and dot 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 data what does this dot 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 data does if we were just to do it like so, it would store uh, an object with ID, then data, and then inside data, it will store a lot of things. But we don't want that. We want to display ID and then the, the media and the creation date and the creator all in the same object without going uh, in deeper within the tree. So by doing this, we make sure that the contents of this object are dumped inside of this object and uh, that way we get a much cleaner object and uh, it is much easier to use and to see. Then we are going to dispatch this. However, we don't have anything to dispatch to. What we are going to do instead is to go into reducers and create a new file which will be called posts.js and uh, we are going to go into auth and grab the contents of it to get a boilerplate code for it. So in this case it will be posts and in here we'll do current user posts and it will be null by default. Then we have to change this uh, state, uh, this constant variable. So we have to create another one. In this case, it will be current user posts updates. Save that. Come into post, the post reducer, uh, paste the current user posts update in there. And in here, instead of current user, it will be current user posts, and the action will be current user post yet again. Okay, save that, and we have to add it to the list of reducers. So let's come in here and do posts, posts, comma, posts, like so. Now let's actually uh, dispatch this, dispatch this uh, to our reducer uh, in order to make it usable, otherwise it won't uh, give out anything. And let's say current user posts update, it will uh, auto import it. Then we are going to say current user posts, and we are going to pass along the posts, like so, and it should save. However, you see that there is an error. So let's go into the terminal and see why this error appeared. And most likely, yeah, it is because of the indexation that's missing. So this error will pop up because we are using a where and the order by. And for Firestore to uh, do these queries in a reasonable amount of time, you have to have an index. So grab this link 
go into your Firestore, Firebase uh, dash dashboard and simply paste it. Call up that link and this page will appear. So create index. Accept it, it will take some time, so I'm going to stop for a second and I'll be right back. Okay, so after some time, you'll see it is enabled. And again, it will take some time, so don't worry. After this, we are going to come in here and reload the application. What we are going to do is, uh, first of all, console log the post just to see what it returns. And if we do this and open up this terminal a bit more, we'll see that it returns an array of objects, each object containing all of the data from each post, containing the media, the everything that comes from each document. So awesome, it is as it should be. Let's clear this console log, and it should already be updating this reducer, so uh, because we are dispatching to it. Okay, so now we are able to close all of these up, and actually display the post. So let's handle that next. And for this, we are going to go into components, profile, and add a new folder. This time it will be called post list. And this post list will contain an index.js and a styles.js. as always, and we are going to do RNF, and this time it will be called profile post list. Save that, go into screens profile, and in here we are going to add it. So profile post list, it will import it like so, and because we don't want to uh, grab the list from this component as we want to reuse it for other uh, user's profile, we are going to, again, use a selector in here in order to get the posts that are in the Redux state. We are going to do, instead of of post, and in here it will be current user posts call the variable the same, so current user post, make it simple, and in here we are going to say posts, current user posts. Okay, so uh, it is done in here. Uh, what we are going to do is to first of all grab the data from here, so current user posts, it will be inside of the props variables, so we can uh, remove the current user posts by uh, making sure it is inside curly brackets and we are able to uh, start implementing the flat list that will be in here. So first of all, let's give some style to the container, styles.container, and in here it will be like so, styles, this is the correct import, let's grab the boilerplate code for the styles, move it in here, and remove the text. It will be really simple, all we have to do is to add a flex of one. Okay, like so, Let's go into our profile to see what appears. And it is given an error, so let's see what it is. It isn't being able to get the posts. And this, let's see what we called our reducer. We called it post. So I made an, a typo in here because it has to be in the plural. It is missing an S. So let's do posts instead of post. Go into the profile and now it works. Let's collapse this go into post list and actually start uh, typing in the flat list. So, flat list, auto import it. It is a self-closing tag. And we are going to set the number of columns to three because that's what TikTok does. It has a flat list which has uh, a bunch of rows and each row has three columns. And this will allow you to do that. Then we are going to set removed clip subviews and what this does it is it optimizes the flat list so that whenever a view isn't in the screen being displayed it won't be rendered this will help with performance then we are going to set the data which in this case it will be posts and in here uh, it isn't current user posts it is just posts because that's what it is passing uh, from uh, the profile screen, this variable in here. Then we are going to set the key extractor, which again helps with uh, performance. So in this case, it will be item. 
and uh, each key of each item will be item.id, as this is an unique ID and it won't be duplicated throughout each uh, the array of posts. Then we are going to render the item. And the render item will take in the item, and it can also take in the index, but for this time it isn't necessary. And in here we are going to return uh, the view that we'll create right now. So let's create another folder inside item list and call it a post list and call it item. Then inside it, it will be index.js and again, styles.js. In the index.js, it will be rnf yet again and it will be called profile post list item. Okay, so now we are able to come in here and simply pass it along. So profile post list item. This is a self-closing tag. And we are going to pass along the item, which will be item. This item right here. Okay, so now we are uh, able to actually render out the, the items, but we have to add the item in here. And it will be really simple because well, first of all, we have the view which will be styles. So style will be equal to styles. But first of all, let's import it. Style from styles. Save that. And in here, it will be style.container. And again, we are going to grab these styles from post list and move it and copy it inside of styles from the profile post list item. Save that. However, it will be slightly different. Uh, but before that, let's simply add the image. Auto import it. Let's add the source, which will be an URI. And in this case, it will be from the item.media in the first position of the array. Because remember, if you come in here, it is, uh, in, we have the array media and the first position is dedicated to the video. The second position is dedicated to the image. There we go. So let's collapse that and add a style to it as well. In this case, it will be styles.image. Save that. And it is given an error because we don't have uh, we aren't getting the, the item from here. And in here it is capitalized, so we have to change it into a non-capitalized to match the props from here. So let's save that, and there we go. Now, the container, it will be uh, a bit interesting because we have to have a flex of one-third. One-third because we want each image to occupy one-third of the width of the screen, and we do this by doing it like so. Then we want to have a height and a height of 200, Better yet, and let's simply add a background color of gray. And two posts appear, uh, it, uh, it looks like it is just one, and this is because there isn't any padding between them. Uh, so let's actually start uh, styling out the image, which is really simple. All we have to do is come in here and do flex one. And by doing so, it will appear and render out as it should. And a, a, a bottom bar is appearing at the bottom, and this is because we have the text in here. So if we remove it, we see that the images appear as they should. So awesome, it is working. Okay, so there we go. We now have a profile page working. Obviously, this profile page only works for the currently logged in user. So after some time when we have the edit profile, which should be the next video, and we are actually able to search for users, then we are going to implement a profile that's more generalized so that we'll be able to reach the profile of any user as right now we have an edit button which shouldn't appear to other users other than the currently logged in user. So there's still some work to be done. However, this is a strong basis for uh, the work to come. So yeah, if you enjoyed this video, then please do leave it a like, subscribe and hit the notification bell. I hope to see you again tomorrow. Ciao!